Hello, everyone, and welcome to Slow Art Friday. My name is Paige Taylor, and I'm the Learning and Engagement Assistant here at the Asheville Art Museum. And I'm happy to be joined today by our touring docent, Megan Pyle. As you participate today, please remember to choose a quiet space and silence alerts from devices. Try not to sit in front of a strong light source. Use headphones and microphones for the best sound quality and use a desktop, laptop, or tablet for the best viewing experience. Make sure your screen name includes your first and last name or your first name and last initial. To make comments, you can unmute your microphone, type in the chat box, or raise your hand. And we are recording, so if you prefer not to be part of the recording, you're welcome to turn your video and microphone off and just turn your mic on when you'd like to make a comment or use the chat box. <clears throat> Each Friday at 12 p.m., docents lead virtual interactive conversations about a few artworks in our collection or special exhibitions. The goal is simple, slow down, discover the joy of looking at art, and talk about the experience with others. For today's program, Megan will lead us in, a, in an interactive conversation about three artworks in our collection. We'll spend about 15 minutes or so with each artwork. Megan will allow us time to look at each artwork on our own, slowly, before leading a conversation about each one with questions. As participants, we encourage you to engage in dialogue with Megan, myself, and each other. Megan, what are we gonna be talking about today? Well, thank you, Paige. Um, so in honor of uh, women's bodies in the museum, we're gonna be looking at three artworks that uh, have that have a different uh, message, um, a different mood. And I'm really interested to hear uh, what, everyone, what everyone thinks about these um, and what we can find out about uh, the women that are the models um, and also find out the, um, the message that the artist is trying to convey and um, they just think about um, our past experiences in the museum and viewing women's bodies. Um, at one time, uh, and this is in the, an old statistic from the 1970s, but um, there were some women artists who were frustrated and they said, you have to be naked to get into the museum. In other words, to have to be a, a woman artist with your artwork on display um, at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. And something like 85% of the women depicted in paintings were nude. Um, and only, you know, 5% of the artists represented were women. So. Uh, I just I thought that was interesting, and that's sort of what um, was the the genesis for the theme this week. So um, I guess we'll we'll get started. Um, Paige, may we see the first artwork, please? Um, so we'll take a a few few seconds to look at this um, top to bottom, side to side, corner to corner. Um, so, uh, where is your eye drawn first in this artwork? I'm drawn to her right hand, which is, um, the, with the positioning of it towards her face and her eyes, almost as if she's hiding in shame or if she's grieving or in pain or, or something of that nature. Okay, good. Um, so, um, so, so do you think that the artist posed this model or do you think that was a, just sort of a natural moment? Um, or natural or just sort of a spontaneous? Do you think the woman was feeling something either in her life or maybe in that moment? 
uh, that caused her to, to put, cover her face with her right hand? I think the artist sketched her as she was, but I don't necessarily look at this as being posed that way. I could see the artist perhaps mentioning to her to do something or to feel something and to represent that and that the model did that on her own. Okay, good. Can we zoom in on the heel? It almost looks on the, her foot and the bottom there, the way the um, pencil sketching, yeah, right around there, I'm just wondering. It almost looks like that's like a different color, like a burnt orange or something of that nature. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure what that is, if it's part of the part of the drawing or something that happened to the the paper or the print. Um, I'm not sure. I'm trying to see I don't notice it anywhere else no. unless someone else does. I don't know what these Right. But it is interesting the way the artist put that little, um, the shadowy lines, you know, along the left side of the body and the heel there. Okay, good. And what about the lines? Where do, where do the lines draw your eye? Sort of up, down, across. Because um, there are a couple of faint lines, right. horizontal lines, and then there are the lines of the woman, um, the woman's pose. I think the line down her back is interesting, the way it curves. Yes, yeah. Yeah. I kind of noticed the, the, a parallel here with sort of the diagonal of her top arm and the diagonal of this supporting leg. So um, you see a balance with the lines, the diagonal lines? I think mm -hmm. so. And then the shading too, like the arm that Paige is just referring to, the, the one that's like the lighter color. And then the right portion from viewing it is lighter. And then the left side is more shaded in. It just gives some, um, I don't know if you want to call it texture to the, to the sketching, you know. Okay, good. Um, so can you all imagine a male figure in the same pose? Definitely. <clears throat> sure can. Absolutely. Okay. And what about um, the, the kind of thoughts and feelings and emotions of the male, um, um, such as grief or sadness or um, that Laurel commented on the female figure? What would you view, how would you view a male figure in that poem? I think for me, it would be equally as beautiful. Um, yeah, I, I think it's a human being pose um, on some level. But yeah, I, I think it would be beautiful to see a male figure in the same pose. Okay, good. So it's interesting to say that it's a beautiful, um, a beautiful drawing and, and a very human being pose to, to be so touched by a, a sketch. Um, and we, and we, we don't, we don't see the, the model's face. Um, but yet she's so expressive with her body. I think if it were a male pose, 
at least for me, it would be for a different reason, a different emotion. In other words, I, I get a sense from this woman for whatever is happening, this emotion, but I could picture a male because I like a lot of sports. I mean, say he missed the field goal at the end of the game and they lost the game, you know, that he could be in distress and almost crying because you've seen male athletes cry when they miss a, a goal or whatever it is and their team loses. But the emotion coming, I don't, I think would be different from the male versus the female. Okay, good. I would just add that um, that um, I have several male friends that are very emotional and cry easily uh, over a variety of things. So at least for me, I think, um, and for some reason I'm thinking about um, just the current state of the world and, you know, yeah. who's your tragedy, but, um, I, 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 I would, I, I think, uh, a male figure expressing grief or, I don't know if this is shame or who knows what's going on, but it's, it's definitely an intense emotion. I think grief is the thing that I feel most. Okay, good. So she's experiencing a loss or reflecting on experiencing a loss. Um, and what about the rest of her body sort of posture or, or body language um, evokes grief? Barbara, if you have a comment, you're welcome to unmute your, your mic and jump right in. I guess what strikes me about it is her emotion doesn't seem to go along with her stance in the sense that I could see that stance being done, how do I put it, without necessarily feeling that intense emotion she's feeling it could just be a stance that a a great artist that did this does, but that artist put in the emotion. I don't know if you're catching what I'm under what I'm trying to communicate. Yes, so it's a so she's the, her shoulders so aren't slumped. She's tall and long, and mm -hmm. she I looks don't strong. Stance. I don't see emotion in the stance. I just see an interesting stance. A beautifully rendered stance. But that artist, is the artist male or female, by the way? He's male. That's interesting. Who um, is it? It's John um, Dangerfield. I don't know. Uh, or, excuse me, Elliot. Elliot Dangerfield. He, the, Eli, John Elliot Dangerfield. He, he went by Elliot Dangerfield. Hmm. Did, is he a contemporary? He's not. This is circa 1910. Oh. Um, and he was born in 1825. Wow. Um, in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Oh, where else? Yeah. And, and then he, he traveled, well, he, he traveled to New York in 1884 to study art. Um, oh. And then he returned home uh, in eight, 18. Let's see. He returned home a couple of years later and founded a studio in Blowing Rock. Wow. So he's a native kind of North Carolina artist. Um, that has a lot of impact for me. Because when I looked at this, I thought, this could be a Degas. The way that's being drawn. And I had to go back and look at the Degas. But I don't, did, did he put emotion like that in there? I have to go back and look. Yes, I'm trying to think of the ballet dancers is what, what I think of um, when I think of Degas. Um, I think in real life, this pose would be hard, at least for me, <laughs> to keep it for any length of time. 
I mean, I couldn't keep my arm and my other arm and my knee bent and, and strike that pose or that stance, you know, after a while I'd be in pain. <laughs> mm, yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And could I say something else? Yes, of course. I, I'm sorry, I didn't see who's, who said it, but somebody said, and I thought it was so wonderful to hear that there, she, in her own life, you're so lucky that you have these men that are emotional <laughs> in the way we are as women. And I had, I, I live in Boston and I'm zooming in from Boston. And I came down to North Carolina in July for something special. I don't want to explain what it is because I don't want you to really identify it. But I had the experience of working with um, two young men, incredible. And they treated me with such respect. Frankly, and I see it as love, such respect and understanding um, for what I was personally emotionally going through. But they got me to do what they needed to do, which well, I'll tell you was exercise. They're exercise specialists. But I had to go through that process, if you sort of understand what I'm saying. And I came to find out that they have a very special relationship with their mother, who was a single mom. So I, I just thought that would fit in here. Yes, absolutely. Thank you for sharing that. And that leads into my, my final question is, you know, um, does the artist, do you think the artist respects the woman, you know, who is the model? Um, or is it, is it just a representation? Do you think that the artist is just admiring the female form and wanting to convey that? Or, or do you think that the artist feels an emotional connection to this woman and he's depicting her in a respectful way? I think that's a great question. <laughs> it feels very respectful to me. Okay, good. And what do you see that makes you say that? Um, I have to think about that. Just the inherent uh, nature of the pose and the gesture, the emotional gesture um, that's being expressed. I don't see anything disrespectful or out of place. Okay, good. And such a beautiful figure without being um, sexually harassed. I don't know how else to put it. Mm -hmm. Without being exploited. Yes. Okay, good. Okay, good. Well, thank you. Well, may we see the title, please, Paige? So it's a, it's a figure drawing, uh, Elliot Dangerfield, circa 1910 graphite on paper. Um, and as I mentioned, he's a North Carolinian. Um, but I just wanted to uh, just share a little bit about the artist's philosophy. Um, uh, this artist felt there was a very strong link between nature and spirituality. Um, mm -hmm. And he's really known for uh, painting landscapes Mm -hmm. um, including even traveling out west um, and uh, painting uh, scenes in the Grand Canyon. Wow. Um, but um, so many of his paintings, um, critics will say, have a mystical quality about them. Um, and the artist said, Art is the principle flowing out of God through certain men and women by which they perceive and understand the beautiful. The office of the artist is to express the beautiful. 
Uh, and he always strove to achieve this in his paintings, wow. many times trying to capture the mood and the feeling of the place um, instead of depicting a specific locale. And, um, and he also even sometimes wrote poetry to accompany his wow. paintings. How come he's not more famous? I'm not sure. It may just be um, he's, his mentor was George Innes. Um, and um, actually, so in 1880, you know, he was born in, um, let's see, uh, in 1880, he, he traveled to New York um, and he to study. And within one year, uh, he had a, um, a painting that was exhibited at the National Academy of Design. So um, wow. his Wait, talent yeah. was really well received early. Um, mm, but I good. love, yes, but I love that he, he went home to, to Blowing Rock. Um, Blowing Rock? Where's Blowing Rock? It's, it's in Western North Carolina. I'm not, I'm Sorry? not exactly. Does anyone know exactly where Blowing Rock is? Yeah, it's a it's near Boone. It's about twelve miles uh, this side of Boone. That's where oh. Cheap Joe's materials is, right? Cheap Joe's art materials. I think so. Yes, there's also there's a Cheap Joe's in Asheville too. But I think the headquarters is in Boone, isn't it? Or is... uh -huh, I'm sure, and um, yeah, and. Grandfather Mountain, I think, is near there, and well, Appalachian State University, and so I think it's a real cultural cultural center um, mm -hmm. that really well, all the Western North Carolina is really. I think there's a lot of cultural centers um, in our area: the Penland School of Crafts, and certainly mm -hmm. Cherokee and Asheville, and areas around Boone. Yes. Okay, well, um, Paige, may we see the next artwork, please? Mm. Um, so we'll, we'll take a few moments um, to look at this artwork and sort of Top to bottom, side to side, corner to corner. Um, um, and I think there's some similarities um, with the, you know, the, the pose in some ways and, um, and the lines um, uh, with, with the previous um, artwork. Um, but I will tell you, this is a photograph um, from 1978, um, that, that I'm interested to, to see what you all think. I think there's a certain timelessness of both the previous artwork and, and this one. Um, but, but what's going on in this artwork? Well, there's three things that strike me, and one is the feet, the way they're crossed, and it, the one foot you see the toes, and the other one the way her foot's positioned, they're bent under, you don't see the toes. And the fact that the rug is black and white, I think if it was in color, it would really distract from um, the, the idea of the whole posing of the, the woman's body. And the third is if you zoom in on her hand, which I actually did before today, it looks like she's wearing a ring which is kind of interesting since she has nothing else on and yet she's wearing the ring. So. Huh. Very good eye. Okay, good. I, I find this incredibly beautiful and I, I used to do a lot of black and white nudes myself. Um, and I'm really struck by the, I don't know what the geometry of the area where her buttocks 
um, makes this almost like a cross. Oh, yeah. and, then, and then the line coming down from the top of her buttocks all the way down almost to her ankles, oh. the geometry of that. Um, it's really interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. And I would just add that because I used to do um, a lot of black and white nudes, to me, they were just beauty. And sometimes people would see some of my work and say that it was sensual or make comments that it was sexual and it. It never was my intention. That was not what my photography was about. So I, you know, I, I tend to project that onto black and white nudes that other people have done. Um, it's really interesting how sculptural it is. And, and I agree with Laurel about the hand um, that's coming underneath the torso. I was going to add to that comment about the hand too, because I hadn't noticed, I've looked at this image before, but um, until Laurel pointed it out, I hadn't noticed the ring on the hand. Um, but I had noticed the hand always seemed like um, oddly placed. And I always wondered why the photographer or the model had, had posed in that way, because it looks like a pretty comfortable pose, except for the way the hand is sticking out. Um, because I think if I were lying down that way, I would have like my arms ahead of, you know, ahead of me, maybe where my head is resting on my arms or something to have my arm or my hand sticking out in that way, I think would be uncomfortable. So I wondered if the model or the artist, the photographer had intentionally wanted us to pay attention to the hand, um, because of the odd placement. And then when Laurel pointed out the ring, then it seemed like maybe there was more of a reason for us to notice the hand. Mm. Okay, good. Yeah, I would imagine if I were in that pose, I'd maybe have my, be on my elbows and be kind of resting, resting my chin on my hands. Um, I can't imagine, yeah, that, that pose, um, um, and it looks, it's interesting that she looks relaxed, um, other than that. And then you wonder, well, where's her other hand and how she kind of supporting her body? Cause it looks like you can see maybe, I don't know if that's her other arm, like if that's maybe her right arm and then it's her left hand that's sticking out. Um, I'm just, I'm not sure. It almost looks like she's, um, able to do a lot of yoga, or, you know, and be very flexible, <laughs> which I could never do, but, um, we're left to the imagination because of the way that tr the photos truncated. And I'm sure it's deliberate, you know, where the other arm is, where's her hair, where's her head, you know, where's the emotion in her face. We don't have any of that. So, and, and like Micah said, the way the um the lines and the cross and and they just um that brings your attention and it, it is it's just it looks pretty i mean that's what it is yes yeah. okay go ahead yes. barbara oh thank you um it just occurred to me because pe everyone was or some of you are talking about the uncomfortable position. And then I started thinking, oh, that would be interesting. If that person was being drawn with um, pencil or whatever, it would take forever to paint that. There's no way I don't think that person could maintain that position. So thank goodness we have photography now. We'd never get that view, I doubt. And then I thought, Wow, and it's on that beautiful rug. What does that mean, the rug? Because I happen to have um, bought some really beautiful rugs in Palestine, and it wasn't easy getting them back. We had to walk across the border, and walking across the border there is no easy feat. And then even when I got them back, 
I had to mail them. And who knows if they'd even get home to the US mailed, but they did. And I, because of that, I've lived with beautiful rugs for many years now, because that's a center of rugs. Uh, I think the rug, um, if I may, I think the rug makes her body more sculptural and more porcelain-like. Okay, I, I agree. There's such a, a contrast between the pattern um, and the skin that it really helps the shape of the body to be defined um, in contrast to the pattern in the, in the rug. And I'm wondering about um, the texture, you know, what the contrast um, between the, the, the texture of the rug and the texture of the model. Um, what, what, do you all, what, what do you all have to say about that? Oh, that's so true. Well, the rug could be itchy and, you know, she looks to be soft. But I'm almost, there actually could be, but we can't see it, a small pillow, like either underneath her front pelvic area or her stomach, or even higher up, there could be, she could be laying on a pillow that's not visible to us. Okay, good. Well, that makes me wonder, is it even real at all? Well, and that's a, that leads into another question is what, um, I mean, do we, what do you see that makes you say that she's, she's lying down in that position or, or could she be standing against the wall? Could the run, I mean, how do we know what position that she's in? What do we see that gives us clues? Hmm. Well, the feet, I, I don't think she's standing. Definitely not. I mean, if the feet were a little bit different, then you could maybe say, okay, this positioning could be the other way and it leaning against a, a wall hanging. But with the feet the way they are, I would say no. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Plus, I don't think you said 1978, I think, Megan, did this? Was, yes, yeah. that's correct. Yes. There wasn't all digital photography and Photoshop and all of that back then. So, I mean, what you took was what you got. So. Mm. Laurel, you took away the surprise. <laughs> <laughs> You've done your early research. Well, um, I will tell you the size. This is a, a four by six essentially a four by six photograph. Inches? Uh, well, or, well, maybe I'm reading it. Four by three fourths by six and three fourths inches. Mm -hmm. So how does that, like if you were viewing this in a museum, can you imagine it at that size? Would it have the same impact? Um, that's so interesting. I, well, smaller, yeah. smaller prints and smaller sizes tend to draw us in closer to the, physically yeah. closer to the artwork to see it. So there's mm -hmm. sort of a naturally more intimate relationship sometimes formed between a viewer and a smaller artwork. Agreed. Okay, good. Well, I'm very curious to see if this is titled um, I, I, I still think the hand is curious. Um, and somebody was talking about up around the shoulder, whether it was her other arm. It almost looks like light to me, like it might be light or uh, up, yeah, there. And then on the rug, there's, there's an area there that could be light, or maybe it's just where the rug is worn. And I'm wondering also if part of the positioning um, is to create the sculptural look. But again, um, the area of her buttocks that almost, it almost looks like a flower, you know, like a, a flower and then the line coming down her legs. 
um, that dark line, um, that space, if part of the positioning was to create that, um, that I don't know what to call it, um, those lines. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that geometry or those lines. Yeah. Was yeah. The, so the artist maybe had a specific um, composition in mind right. and was yeah. instructing the model on how to position exactly. her body to do exactly. that. Yes, exactly. Okay. okay. And, um, and what about if this were a male figure? Would it be as beautiful or as impactful um, go ahead Barbara <laughs> I'm just thinking of a million things at once well before you asked that question I thought of when when Micah you described it as a flower made me think of Georgia O'Keeffe and what she does in her paintings um they're flowers, but they're also female organs. Um, and it's just such a, they're so beautiful and there's such a respect for them. And, and then earlier in the first one, I thought of um, um, who did the thinker? I, obviously we know it. I can't think of the name. The Rodin. Thank you, Rodin. You're welcome. Did the thinker. And I think that fits in with G. Why, sure, men can be depicted beautifully. And they were in Greek times, the Michelangelo. Um, but it, then I thought, well, this is interesting because I happened to see a movie and I couldn't watch the whole thing. I got, I didn't like it, but it was very instructive um, that about um, Rodin's lover, I don't remember her name, interestingly, but she was an artist in her own right. Do you remember her name? She was a sculptress. She went to him to be Camille. Mentored. I think her Camille. name was Camille. Yeah. And he dumped her. He dumped her. And <laughs> something terrible happened to her. I think she stopped sculpting. And she was even better than he was. Yep. <laughs> or at least as good. Yeah, I remember that film. It's a, it's a it's a good film. Yeah, I had trouble watching the whole thing, but I usually don't. Actually, I was big into Georgia O'Keeffe years ago, and she made repeated statements that her paintings, um, you know, very enlarged flowers um, were not sexual at all, and that she was never intending it to refer to female genitalia oh really so i got the yeah. one yeah thank you <laughs> i so mean much. everybody everybody does i mean we all do right. we've all been there but she was kind of pissed off about that apparently yeah that's that all that minute detail that you don't get to hear usually really makes a difference thank you for pointing that out i will never say that again <laughs> Well, well, thank you. Um, well, may we see the label, please? And we'll, we'll see the title. Can I say just, Barbara, if, if like all of us see female genitalia, if that's what you see, you see. That's just how Georgia felt about her work. Well, guess no. what? I did a series of paintings that I did intend to have it be seen that way. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, so this doesn't really help us much with the title, Reclining Nude with Carpet, because um, I certainly imagine, too, that there might have been some significance with the ring, um, but, um, but it's, alas, it's just Reclining Nude with Carpet, Sandy okay. Noy. Go ahead. Actually, what's interesting, though, to me is it, it says with carpet and not on carpet. So oh, it's like yeah. it's a whole thing, the nude and the carpet, they go together that it's not a nude on a carpet. I don't know. Uh -huh. Well, that is interesting that that's part of the, um, it's almost, it is sculptural. It's like two elements. You have the, the woman in the carpet 
sort of like a sculpture is, is on a base, resides on a base. Um, so that is, that's really interesting. Um, it's a palladium print on paper. And there really is not a lot of information about this artist um, other than she was born in 1941 in New York and she received a Bachelor of Arts from Yale University in 1963. Um, and she's a photographer that pollute, produces silver and palladium prints. Um, so that's, she must just prefer her anonymity. Um, well, I didn't know she was a woman. I wasn't sure because Sandy could be also a man's name. Yes, oh, it could be. Yes. Okay, well, Paige, may we see the next artwork, please? Um, oh, great. Wow, look at that. Wow. And just, well, just while well, y'all are taking a few, few seconds to look at this top to bottom, side to side, corner to corner, I'll just say that, um, this slide has been available for docents to use in the image bank for, for quite some time. And, and I was so struck by it the first time I saw it. I've not seen it in the museum, but, um, and so I've been, I've been waiting a long time to, to, to use this um, on a tour because I was really drawn in the first time I saw this. Um, so, so what's going on in this artwork? Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Barbara. Um, it really scares me. Um, it looks weird to me. Um, seeing that superimposed skeleton in some form of um, media, I don't know if it's drawing or graphics, whatever it is, over a real photo of this poor woman. <laughs> I don't know what, the, it, it, why is she standing there in front of a mirror? It looks like she's standing there in front of a mirror. Why is she nude? And, and then it's not even just a regular skeleton. It has that really weird shape at the top that of the ribs that are made to look like some creepy crab. So, I okay, good. So, so it definitely um, is a di very different, um, just in terms of thinking about women's bodies in the museum. Um, the first two images, there's quite a contrast between this. The other images, if you walk past them in the museum, um, they, they sort of seem to fit, you know, the representation that we're, we're used to seeing, but this is a completely different, <laughs> different format. Um, it looks like thread, um, the yellow and the blue and um, the orange definitely look like threads. Yeah. Okay, good. And what do you see that makes you say that? Just, just the way the design is and the, um, the format oh, and the yeah. coloring looks like thread. And she definitely looks like an older woman. The other two women look very young in, in my opinion. And, and just the, the, the stature, the weight, the, the facial expression, the breasts, everything in this picture looks like an older woman versus the younger one that was just especially, you know, with the carpet. Okay, good. Because there's the other women though, we didn't see, we just saw their, their backside. Um, mm, yeah. But her skin, I think does look smooth. It does look smooth, not um, true. Not not wrinkled, or um, right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, what about her mood? How do you think she's feeling? 
Oh, yes, Barbara? Um, I don't, anyway. Um, well, I can't see the, her eyes. Am I not seeing them or are they cut off? Is, um, are they off. actually cut off in the picture? So that's interesting to me that we don't really get to see her whole face. And the part of the face that I am seeing, she doesn't look comfortable. To me, she doesn't look comfortable at all. I don't know if I'm projecting it, but if I was standing in front of somebody having a picture taken of me with the way my body is right now, I would not feel comfortable. And, okay. and she's older, I'm older. And there are a lot of women that have been able to maintain their figure, but I hate to say it, she hasn't been able to maintain it the way a 20 year old looks. Okay, good. And what about um, the, the curvature of you know, her lips and her hands and her shoulders? Does she look relaxed or stiff or confident, embarrassed or? She looks very looks uncomfortable and embarrassed to me. Okay. I don't know that, I, I'm not seeing embarrassment. She looks stiff. It looks awkward. Um, I'm trying to like it and I don't. <laughs> and just her face, I keep thinking it looks like a mug shot. Um, yeah. Yeah. Like she's being booked, you know, at a police station. Yeah, exactly. Um, exactly. Okay. But it's the, the thread or the painting, the, 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 um, whatever these highlighted uh, images are, are kind of strange. So I'm real curious to see the title. It may be nude woman with drawing, <laughs> not very descriptive, <laughs> but it's, um, it's an older body. And I know for me, um, sorry, my phone, I'm so sorry. Um, you know, I was an athlete, I was a jock. And then there was menopause and then there was weight gain. And I can't believe it, but I'm about to turn 61 in 10 days. Oh, wow. <laughs> just really hard. I mean, I grieve sometimes the body that I had of my youth or even up until my forties. And it's, it's really, for me, it's been really hard to keep working on my body, but also realize, you know, it is what it is. So there's a balance there. So maybe that's part of what this photograph is about. I don't know what the crab looking uh, um, image could represent in terms of maybe an aging body. I, I, I don't know. Okay, good. I, I agree with Micah Jean on the pose that it looks kind of, or someone said mugshot, the, the pose of the body looks scientific. Like it's, it's posing to show something about the body or, um, and the first time I saw this picture, I assumed that that there was always an, when this photo was made, there was already an intention that it would be, um, to me, it looks like embroidered. And so it looks like the picture was taken to like prepare the body to be embroidered for like the final, oh, final nice. artwork. Okay, good. So, so do you think this artwork belongs in a museum? <laughs> That's interesting. Barbara, you can go ahead and comment whenever you're ready. Okay, thanks. Um, this, like I, from the beginning and even more as people are talking, this photo really gives me the creeps. <laughs> Um, I feel worried for this woman and I, I get this sense. It, it, I've seen photos, I think I've seen photos like this or I, I've seen it in um, movies, but when w people are taken to prison, they have to strip and they go through this really horrible um, um, de uh, dehumanizing investigation of their bodies because 
they have to look for stuff up there and make sure they're not carrying it in drugs whatever but it's all dehumanizing and just the way she's standing reminds me of that i won't go where i go with it but just here in prisons okay. here in the flesh, that happens so, um, so yes i think it's great it's in a museum because it reminds me of that and it reminds me of what a segment of our population has to go through yes okay and can anyone see kind of the the feminine the curves of her body and the lines i mean does she what, what how would it be different if this were a male um, i think it would be the same they'd be going through the same humiliating thing I could almost see this as like in a science lab or a medical teaching environment, like something that would be put up with some purpose, as opposed to trying to be picturesque, even though it has all these threads. And I don't know if that's a crab, but the way the threads on either side of her shoulder come out on each side is kind of um, a little strange. And I, I think it's meant to be some sort of purpose teaching sort of photo yeah and and those tuskegee experiments were terrible <laughs> and they happened in the south by the way but they okay. were still for science so do you have where my head is gone yes okay good so um so so perhaps this the artist's intent was to to highlight um, medical experiments or, or some sort of, has some sort of connection with a scientific purpose. Um, so do you think she's standing or lying down? Um, and, and how, what, how could you describe that if she's, you think she's standing or lying down? It's called gravity. <laughs> uh, Sorry. Standing. Okay. Standing. Yeah. yeah. I agree. Okay. okay. Good. Okay, good. Well, um, I guess if may we, I, I was, I usually ask, um, <laughs> would you display this in your home? Or, and then I'm, I'm going to guess nobody would. <laughs> um, I'm happy but, they're in museums so I can go and see them when I feel like it, feel up to it. Right. Okay. I looked well, up the, I looked up the, um, what does crab represent? And it says defensive. First and foremost, mm -hmm. crabs are a symbol of defense. Their hard oh. shell, oversized claws, and seemingly fearless attitude are all um, symbolic of their strong defensive capabilities. Oh, that's interesting. Thank you oh. for that. Um, oh. Okay, well, um, may we see the label, please? And we don't have to end our discussion on this, but... Um, wow. Oh, wow. Ah. But I love that because, I mean, there's a literal title meaning from the title, Cancer, um, from the series <laughs> Contemplating My Internal Organs. And it is a gelatin silver print with embroidery thread on paper. But oh cancer... God. You know, not just the um, astrological sign, but but you know, if if someone is it is is fighting cancer, then you know maybe they would the the symbol of the crab is being strong and defensive and protective. Um, so that's that's I love that. Um, wow. So, and I uh, found that really creepy. That's interesting. Um. I was just mesmerized by this for some reason. The, the first time I saw it, and I never could fit it in with a theme, um, but the artist, um, Pinky M.M. Bass, um, actually, so she was inspired to, um, by her sister's battle with cancer. So she herself, um, she didn't have cancer. Um, and, uh, and, um, so, and, and Pinky 
is a photographer herself, but, um, uh, and, and she says, my work in photography has always aimed at revealing the edges of the mystery of life, incarnation, regeneration, aging, death. Wow. The human figure occupies the center of my visual imagery. While I've expanded into multimedia work, performance, sculpture, and installations, the photographic image uh, remains as my point of departure. Um, and this series, these photographs, they were installed so that both the front and back surfaces could be viewed. Um, and, and so when her sister was diagnosed with cancer, she just became obsessed with what was going on inside her body. Mm. Um, so. Um, really powerful. And the artist was born in um, uh, 1936 in Pittsburgh. Oh. And then she uh, moved south and attended uh, Agnes Scott College and got an MFA uh, in photography from Georgia State University. Uh, her studio is in Fairhope, Alabama. Um, but she actually, she returned to college at age 50 to get her MFA uh, in photography. And um, so I was telling she's just a fascinating kind of um, artist. And, um, but thank you all so much. Um, is there any, any final comments that anyone I, would like to make? I think for me, this is such a perfect example of, of the mystery of art in a sense of like, I mean, I had not uh, done any homework ahead of time. So this was a surprise for me and how much just talking about the image itself and then the title kind of blowing me out of the water a little bit. Yeah, right. And I did think some of the, the superimposed artistry, artistic stuff, there were moments where it made me think about Frida Kahlo. So yes. Um, thank you. This was great today. Um, I have something. Yes, Barbara. I just wanted to relate an experience I had. I'll do it quickly. I was in a women's support singing group for 20 years, somewhere around less, a little less. And so we, and most of the, and so a lot of us bonded. And for a period of time was this particular woman who wasn't there that long, but she was so good. She actually worked for the music therapist for a while. And she probably, she did that because she needed the money, I'm guessing. So she probably bartered, but I don't really know. Um, but she was a wonderful artist herself. Plus she could sing. I think she even did theater, if I remember correctly. Well, she got cancer. It may have been of the breast, I don't remember. But she ended up doing this beautiful story that she illustrated and it's published. And I could always find out the name if anybody's interested, but it has beautiful pictures. And so the way she dealt with cancer, her chemotherapy, was that she imagined in her head chemo theories, fairies, F-A-I-R-I-E-S. So she painted pictures of chemo fairies. That's what I remember. <laughs> oh, wow. So, Interesting. So yeah. I just felt, I mean, that what this reminded me of that. So I just felt like, telling you. Thanks, Barbara. Yeah, thank you. And Megan, thank you for selecting these three artworks and finding a way to um, present this last artwork that you've been wanting to incorporate for a while. <clears throat> this was a great way to do it. Um, and thank you all for participating in a wonderful discussion today. Um, mm -hmm. Our next Slow Art Friday will be on September the 10th. And our docent, Hank Bovey, will lead us in a conversation with the theme of What a Wonderful World. So oh, we wow. hope that you will join us then. And I uh, will send out the link with more information and to register for our next, um, our next session in the uh, email um, this afternoon. So have a great uh, weekend and hope to see you again soon. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Bye-bye. Stay safe.